Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello, beautiful soul family, and welcome to Weekly Wisdom and Insights, your home for spiritually guided transformation and empowerment. I am your host, Dear James, and together with the Unseen, Spirit, Source, and Symphony, we look at the current energies, the intuitive wisdom and insights, and we go as guided. And it's a whole, you know, it's a whole new year is the way it feels. We're at that point in that time of harvest, and, you know, looking back at the first Um, eight months of the year. And, you know, that old saying, reaping what we sow, like, what have we planted? What have we sown? And what are we growing? And so you may have noticed that the intro music has changed. So there's new intro music to the shows and just an overall feeling of reconciliation, newness. Welcome, Alicia. Welcome, Olivia. Um, And so beautiful energies. And as I looked at uh, the 9-2, the September 2nd, it's a Virgo new moon. And I'll just bring that up really quickly. Let me bring up the astrological uh, influences here so we can see them. And remember, 828, Mercury stations direct, right? So Mercury is now moving forward. And it is, we're in the shadow, but we're moving forward. And then on the 2nd, which is also the 3rd in Europe, um, because it was late in the evening of the 2nd, is the new moon, and it's 11 degrees Virgo. And coming up, and then today, Mars enters Cancer, so Mars is going to be kind of swimming and slogging through. So how we take action, and you'll see how that's a little bit, um, it can be a little bit muddled, but everything is moving forward. And then coming up on this coming Sunday, Mercury enters, it re-enters Virgo, because it went retrograde in in Virgo, and now it's re-entering Virgo. So here we are. And this gateway express, and so because the new moon and the sun for this Virgo new moon are at 11 degrees, 11 is a gateway, it's a way to, a way through. And so the unseen said this gateway express, a greater unveiling. And this word unveiling, it's our key word. Um, So you're going to be hearing that word unveiling a lot throughout this show. Um, And it's going to be continuing. This is going to be arcing out into the future. And so again, when I was just sitting quietly, mind's eye, like, okay, this 9-2 Virgo new moon and the energies and everything, and I was thinking about it, and then this was a few nights ago, and then I went to sleep. And in the middle of the night, the unseen wakes me up, um, and just in my in my head, the chorus line the lyrics to this song, and it's our main title. It's our main theme. And our main theme is love lift us up where we belong. And it goes with dream a beautiful dream. And so in the image, you see, you know, this vastness, it's almost like a lake. It's not so much the ocean, but it's a vast body of water. You see the the hot air balloon, colorful hot air balloon in the sky, the sun rising, 
It's and there's eight birds again. The birds denote spirit and the unseen, and that love lift us up where we belong. And so the chorus, the song is from the 1982 film "An Officer and a Gentleman" uh, with Richard Gere and Deborah Winger. The song is is performed by Joe Cocker and Jennifer Warnes. So it's the lyrics. They were the unseen was making a powerful statement about the lyrics, and they said, "It says, who knows what tomorrow brings? In a world few hearts survive. All I know is the way I feel when it's real. I keep it alive when it's real." And so this whole th- this whole journey about truth and transparency and what's at your center and when it's real, I keep it alive. Um, The road is long. There are mountains in our way, but we climb a step every day. And so it is like Mars in Cancer and so forth. There are going to Mercury retrograde. There are going to be moments. There are mountains. There are going to be moments where we have to slog sometimes, where, where the advance requires effort. And yet we climb a step every day. And then it goes into the chorus line, love lift us up where we belong, where the eagles cry on a mountain high. Love lift us up where we belong, far from the world below, up where the clear winds blow. And the unseen had been saying to us for the longest time, stay in the eye of the hurricane. That's where it's safe, it's calm, it's peaceful. We're centered because if we're out on the uh, the perimeter and everything, the peripheral, it's going to be chaotic and brutal. So welcome, Heather. And then the second verse, which is so on point with everything that we've been talking about, about the past versus the future and so forth, and it goes on, some hang on to used to be, live their lives looking behind. All we have is here and now, all our life out there to find. And so we've been doing this with the whole analogy of the train and how they're clinging to the edge over the abyss and everything because they're they're hanging on, they're clinging to used to be, living their lives looking behind, wanting to go back. But in essence, truly, all we have is here and now, the present moment, all our life out there to find. It's what's before us because where we've already been We've already been, we've already done it. We've already lived it, experienced it. And now it's about where are we going? And individually and collectively, um, as above, so below. The refrain of the song, the road is long. There are mountains in our way, but we climb a step every day. And it goes back into the chorus line, love lift us up where we belong. And then finally the bridge, time goes by, no time to cry. Life's you and I alive today. And so there's a beautiful message here for us that this love lift us up where we belong. And it's our main image again of this hot air balloon being lifted. Welcome, Sue. And along with dream a beautiful dream. Um, And why dream a beautiful dream? And the image speaks to kind of dreaming and sleep state and yet the sun rising and burgeoning and the hot air balloon being lifted higher and again the the eight birds and so this dream a beautiful dream because everything is in front of us and in our youth our innocence our hopes our dreams our wishes our fantasies our illusions they inspire us they keep us motivated they They demonstrate what's possible. And so again, in this, in the deliverance of this Virgo new moon, this harvest time, this point that anything is possible, it sets, it creates a newness within us. It's reigniting our dreams, our hopes to not let the light burn out. Don't ever let the light burn out. No matter what, no matter what we face, whether it's collectively, you know, universally, collectively, or individually in our own lives, there may be mountains to climb, but the, but the moral, the soul, the unseen is saying, 
love lift us up where we belong. It's love. It's not fear. It's not hate. It's not division or separation. It's love. With Master Jesus, love superseded the law. And the message was simple. Love. And so the first thing the unseen said, it's number one with the unseen. So we have this theme of love lift us up, dream a beautiful dream. It's coinciding with this Virgo new moon. And they said, leap of faith, a giant leap of faith with an exclamation point. And so we collectively are facing this giant leap of faith to move forward, to not only bridge, but um, embrace the Aquarian matriarchal era, the future, the present future era, the here and now. It's not about going back to the Piscean patriarchal era. We have been there, done that, and we're moving on. We're moving forward. Um, it's been used in you know political campaigns. We're not going back. And, and literally, that's true. We're not going back. You can't. It's impossible. And why would we? So it's going to require, so in our individual lives, the energies of this new moon, this Virgo new moon, and it's harvest. So it's the divine feminine. It's the divine mother. It is the reaping of everything we've planted and the renewal of that, the the nourishment and the custodial care of that, because it, it's cyclical. It comes around every every year, every cycle. And it's this leap of faith. So where in our individual lives will we have a requirement for this leap of faith? And it's number one. So it's the creative force. It's Mars energy. It's the creative force, this leap of faith, a giant leap of faith, moving us forward. So let's look at the main energies really quickly. We'll set the stage. So September, it's a nine month. So small restraint, surrender. And it's it's a beautiful aspect of remembering taking the small steps as we as we need them. Uh, you know, because it's sometimes it is a giant leap of faith, but that can also be built upon small restraint. This this surrender, moving forward because we're and the hidden influence is opposition. We're yielding. We're moving beyond opposition. The mountains that we must climb or that are in the way. And the underlining cause is 16, enthusiasm, that we're aligning with the way and we're doing it in a joyful way. Number four, today's the 4th of September, youthful folly. So again, it's that hoping, the dreams, the wishes, that it, the innocence, youthful folly, try again. So if we haven't succeeded, if you haven't succeeded somewhere, try again from a youthful exuberance. We're continuing the uniting, unite the eight, because 2024 is an eight year all year long. So this coming together from the inside out and collectively coming together, we the people, it's an Aquarian anthem, we the people. So uniting, unite. And then we come into, it's a 21, lucky number 21. And I love this in the Yijing 21, it's biting through, it's about discernment. So when we take that leap of faith, when love is lifting us up and we're and we dream a beautiful dream it's with discernment it's with this biting through and it doesn't mean that that has to be chaotic or hard or confrontational it can simply like alexander the great with the gordian knot they had been trying for eons to untie this knot and he simply went up and sliced through it because no one ever said you couldn't do that. It wasn't cheating. No one ever said that that was a improper way to, in essence, remove the knot, untie it. So he sliced through it, biting through. It's with discernment. And three, hexagram three, we're going to be using difficult beginnings, persevere. Because unlike the other uh, hexagrams in the Yijing, Hexagram three is the combination. It's the, the yin and yang. It's hexagram one and hexagram two. So masculine, the force, and the creative force, or the receptive force. The creative force and the receptive force. So the divine masculine and feminine coming together. And so let's look at that ever so quickly. We're going to go to hexagram three. 
It's difficult beginnings. We're at this moment where we are at some massive transition. Imagine the time of Master Jesus, 2,000 plus years ago, moving from the um, age of Aries, the ram, the bull, to Pisces, the fish. And look at how 2,000 plus years later, how iconic, everlasting that era, that moment is and was. We are living that same Um, experience in a new way, because now we're moving from Piscean to Aquarian. But that shift and how and what it requires of us and those that didn't want the new era to come into being, however, came it did. It doesn't, it does not reverse itself or pause and it moves forward. And so we are in that moment, this tremendous leap of faith where we're up against the old ways, what everybody has known, and the absolute positivity and possibility of what's before us, what's new. So this difficult beginnings, its action is persevere, keep moving forward. Because if we don't, we, we stagnate. So our, one of our first quotes is, this beautiful dragging the adversary about when there is no adversary will cost you your inner treasure. And the images of a man with an anchor in the, in the earth, in the sand, dragging it behind him. Well, can you imagine dragging the adversary about when there is no adversary? It's an illusion will cost you your inner treasure. It costs it, it costs you your life force. Exactly. And Sue is saying, and we do it again, and we do it over and over and over again. Exactly. So stop, because we have a choice to not drag about an illusion. The adversary is an illusion. And it costs us our inner treasure, our life force, our joy, our happiness, our advance, our expansion. So this is from Carrie Hone at CafeOsoul.com. Hexagram three, difficult beginnings, persevere. Just as a seedling must crack open and push through soil and rocks to reach its source of solar nourishment, all new endeavors encounter obstacles in the beginning stages. We are in the beginning stage of the Aquarian matriarchal era. This transition, this peaceful transfer of power. And that's what's occurring. The time calls for persevering into regeneration because we're renewed, just like this Virgo new moon. We're being lifted up higher. Love lift us up where we belong. We we belong higher at a higher octave. And so, and that it embodies regeneration. Obstacles refine our sincerity about what we are doing and hone our inner vision. So the obstacles play a role. Those clinging to the past play a role. It strengthens us. It strengthens our inner resolve to move forward. It tests our sincerity about what we are doing, and it hones our our inner vision moving forward. The arrangement of the Yijing generally unfolds where each hexagram is viewed to be the cause or response of the preceding one. Yet hexagram three is the result of two hexagrams, the creative and the receptive interacting. Therefore, hexagram three embodies how opposite yet powerful energies give birth to something new. See, these two energies, the divine masculine and the divine feminine, coming together, this peaceful transfer of power, from one era and age to another, and that they give birth to something new. This hexagram has a unique message where an unavoidable but, unavoidable but difficult encounter must come together, such as in marriage. Because the situation has never gone before, it lacks the clarity that comes from experience. Yet how refreshing! 
It embodies the sense that the situation is meant to be, and its opposing qualities are what brought it to life in the first place. This is meant to be. It may be new, it may be unknown, and yet it's refreshing. It embodies the sense that the situation is meant to be, and its opposing qualities are what bring it to life in the first place. Because without without its um, opposite, if you will, we don't know what's on offer, what it's not, without the opposite. Um, Hexagram three can appear when a commitment is being considered and the act of considering it is what changed an easy attraction into something difficult. Like nature, which would remain stagnant without necessary friction, hexagram three embodies perfectly how to embrace conflict as the driving force of evolution. So we embrace the conflict in a healthy, positive, proactive way. We recognize it for the creative force that it is that moves us forward. Not to stagnate us, not to rewind and and move us backwards, but to revolutionize, that we evolve forward, and it's a driving force of that evolution. Often we want to cast blame when we fail, but we always take responsibility for our success. To succeed, you must recognize how Tao improves deficiencies by sharpening them into skills. It's through our quote unquote failures that Tao improves the deficiency, it sharpens our skills. It allows us to see more clearly what we've been, where we've been, and what we don't want to be in the future, how we improve, how we hone. And this is true. Micro, individual lives, macro. Life has always been committed to your success. But going it alone is not an option here because the dynamic of interdependency is central to hexagram three, to the difficult beginnings, to the two, the creative force and the receptive force coming together to move us forward. So this is uniting, unite, coming together. It's dynamic. It's the dynamic of interdependency. Learn to see the teacher in those who challenge you. Find the gift. They are playing a divine role. On a soul level, it's divine and neutral. So any challenge, they're a teacher. Just as any you know, positive opportunity aspect, they're a teacher. Eliminate defenses and preconceptions so you can be lifted to a higher level. Here's hexagram three. Here the unseen is waking me up in the middle of the night with the lyrics to love lift us up where we belong. Eliminate defenses and preconceptions so you can be lifted to a higher level. The hidden influence describes the splitting apart of a past way of thinking. We have been talking about hexagram 23 for a long time. This splitting apart from what was what no longer serves. A past way of thinking while the cauldron refines and boils down your capabilities. Connect with your passion and purpose and persevere until you find a way to manifest your dream. Dream a beautiful dream. See, the dreams keep us advancing. Dreams keep us moving forward. They inspire us. They inspire others. So find, connect with your passion and purpose and persevere until you find a way to manifest your dream. In that regard, hexagram three embodies the dream coming into existence. The path ahead is new and promises wonderful transformational learning, regardless of the outcome. It is unknown. We don't know what's on the other side. And yet it's number two, what we do know. The unseen is saying to us, number two, what's on the other side of all of this? Illumination. So that was the key word they said, illumination. And then they said, what's on the other side of the rainbow? What's on the other side of our dreams? Well, it's the experience. Regardless of the outcome, it's the experience. It's the renewal. It's the bliss, the joy. It can be the trepidation and the fear and everything. However, everything's energy. So harness 
the, the energies of fear, trepidation, and so forth for you as a catalyst to move you forward. Sue was saying, so true, and it's very difficult to overcome myself and my reactions to rivals. And yet the only thing, Sue, this reaction to rivals, it's simply something inside. They're mirroring some, they're, they're mirroring your ability or inability to recognize your own greatness. And this takes us to our mantra. My greatness lies within. Here's a beautiful ballerina. She's in, in a, um, a state where she is leaping in the air, fully extend, the, you know, full extension and everything. This leap of faith, a giant leap of faith. And our mantra is, my greatness lies within. It will always reside within us. It is your soul source connection. And so when we're dealing with obstacles, challenges, as Sue mentioned, rivals, they're not really rivals. That's an illusion. What they're doing is inspiring us. They're they're forcing us to look in, to see ourselves, to see our greatness, to stand in our center and shine because it's not dependent upon them. It's solely dependent upon you, us, each individual. That's what brings out our greatness. And so, like our mantra, my greatness lies within. And you see the light. She's leaping towards the light. There's all of this brilliance, this light pink, um, tutu for better words, um, ballerina costume and outfit. Um, so let's take a look at the astrological chart. And this is the, the astrological chart for the Virgo new moon that was on the second. It happened to be uh, Labor Day in the United States. Um, and again, Labor Day. So here's, um, again, we the people, what individual people labor bring forth. We labor in the fields. We labor in our lives. We labor at work, at our skills. And it was Labor Day. And here on this Virgo new moon in the United States, Olivia is saying, in the end, we need to see we are all one. Exactly, exactly. Unified, one, whole. When we see one another. And let me just go to, because it's number um, three. And they were speaking about what they said was, I heard the phrase, more than one. So we're working with, again, this um, Virgo new moon astrological chart, the Sabian symbols, the, the hexagrams that surround it and so forth. And the unseen said, more than one. And then I instantly knew, ah, uh, it's, a, it's a Bible verse. It, it goes, it's in scripture. And it's from Matthew 18, 19, 20. And they said, again, I give you an eternal truth. If two of you agree to ask God for something in a symphony of prayer, my heavenly Father will do it for you. For wherever two or three come together in honor of my name, there am I in the midst of them. So love lift us up where we belong. Dream a beautiful dream. This leap of faith, this illumination, what's on the other side of the rainbow? And of course, in the song, Over the Rainbow, it's, you know, bluebirds fly over the rainbow. Why, oh, why can't I? And the message is, we can. You can, I can. We simply need to choose what's on the other side. Because that's where the mystery lies. That's where the magic lies. And this has to do with unveiling. It's our key word. So unveiling. The presentation or announcement of something in public for the first time putting on display for the first time, to remove a veil or covering from something, a person, a place, a thing, an act or instance of presenting, displaying, or revealing, especially for the first time. Well, this is the first time we, 8 billion souls on the planet in this moment, are unveiling or being a part of, participating 
in this unveiling of the Aquarian matriarchal era. It's an unveiling. The first, the hexagram that goes with the sun and the moon, because they're together when it's a new moon. The Sabian symbol is from Dane Rudyard's An Astrological Mandala. After the wedding, the groom snatches the veil away from his bride. The keynote is the penetrating and unveiling power of the trained mind. So some, the, a veil being lifted. We often speak about the unseen and we say on the other side of the veil. Well, the groom, the divine masculine, snatches the veil away from his bride, his bride, revealing something from the divine feminine. It reveals the purity of the, of the bride, of the divine feminine. At the very end of this, the key word is unveiling. And it talks about the the masculine act balances the feminine dream visualization. So they're coming into harmony. So dreaming and so forth, representing the divine feminine, the action, the the masculine act that balances that, that brings it to life. It's actionary. That's divine masculine. The point here, which was very interesting, this keyword unveiling, and they said with the Sabian symbol, there can also be an unveiling of mysteries long protected by secrecy. The divine feminine hasn't been hiding. The divine feminine has been protected. What it, its mysteries, what it truly has to offer and is on offer, this long protected by secrecy, and the veil is being snatched, it's being removed. So I want to go to, because I found this so fascinating, I'm going to share my screen with all of you. And this was just written, um, this is on medium.com by Indira Angel, and she's covering this article. A 60-ton enigma in the Egyptian sands. And here is this image. This is in Egypt. And what you see in the image is this colossal, 60-ton colossal tomb. The Egyptian desert, forever whispering secrets, has unveiled another marvel, a colossal 60-ton granite sarcophagus untouched for millennia. News of the discovery sent shockwaves through the archaeological community, igniting a frenzy of speculation. What secrets lay within this behemoth carved from the earth's very bones? What story did it yearn to tell? The sheer size of the sarcophagus was the first point of intrigue. Granite, quarried hundreds of kilometers away, is a notoriously difficult material to work with. Moving such a massive block, even when the ingenuity of the ancient Egyptians would have been an engineering feat of staggering proportions. There has always been, we want to attribute this to humans. We constantly attribute the greatness of ancient Egypt to quote unquote humans. And yet there are things to this day, the great pyramids of Giza, there are so many things that cannot to this day be replicated. And so it speaks to otherworldly presence, influence, opportunities, teachings, because they're saying even at this, with the ingenuity of the ancient Egyptians, the engineering feat is of staggering proportions. Theories swirled like desert sand. Was this the final resting place of a pharaoh? Their power and influence symbolized by the sheer immensity of their tomb? Or perhaps it held a high priest, an individual revered beyond measure, deserving a sarcophagus befitting their status? Days turned into weeks as archaeologists archaeologists meticulously cleaned and examined the exterior. The smooth, polished surface held no inscriptions, offering no clues to its occupant. The weight and size pointed towards royalty, but the absence of hieroglyphics was unusual. Perhaps the tomb was looted in antiquity, the treasures removed, and the identity of the deceased erased, somewhat like Amarna, where everything in Amarna was removed, dismantled, and yet it was preserved because they had dismantled it. So when it got resurrected, it told the story of Amarna. Sorry, we had a moment there. 
where we lost the connection to LinkedIn. Um, or maybe this tomb predated the widespread use of hieroglyphics belonging to an earlier enigmatic period in Egyptian history. The excitement reached a fever pitch when a small, almost hidden crevice was discovered on the side of the sarcophagus. With bated breath, the team carefully chipped away, revealing a narrow passage leading into the heart of the granite giant. The anticipation was palpable, with the answer to who and why finally be revealed. This story has such great um, excitement, um, mystery, intrigue. And think about archaeologists and the dream that they dream a beautiful dream. They are looking to find exactly this type of experience, this type of, of location and circumstance. After days of painstaking excavation, the passage opened into a small chamber. Inside, bathed in the soft glow of torches, lay a, light, lay a sight that left archaeologists speechless. The sarcophagus wasn't designed for a single person, nor did it hold any human remains. Instead, it contained a collection of exquisitely crafted golden artifacts, intricate statues of deities, meticulously detailed figurines depicting scenes of daily life, and a series of inscribed tablets made from a rare, unknown metal. So in this moment, I'm going to come back to this again. In this moment, and this just happened earlier this year, and this illumination, this unveiling, the unveiling of mysteries. It wasn't about one individual, patriarchal, Piscean era, ego mind personality. It was about an era. It was about a moment in time, the whole of a, of a community, or the whole of a teaching, we the people. It's being discovered now, Aquarian area era, matriarchal era, this we the people. So let me come back to it again. And inscribed tablets made from a rare unknown metal. The discovery sent the archaeological world into a frenzy. This wasn't just a tomb. It was a time capsule, a window into a lost chapter of Egyptian history. I would say to you, a window into a lost chapter of human history. The golden artifacts with their intricate details and unknown material hinted at a level of craftsmanship and technology previously unknown. The inscribed tablets, their language a mystery waiting to be deciphered, promised to rewrite our understanding of ancient Egypt, of ancient humanity, of the world. The news quickly spread beyond the realm of academia, capturing the imagination of the world. Dream a beautiful dream. Social media exploded with theories, comparisons being drawn to lost civilizations and hidden knowledge, while the scientific community cautioned against sensationalism. The public's fascination only grew. The discovery of the 60-ton sarcophagus marked a turning point in Egyptology. It wasn't just about one tomb or one individual. It was about rewriting the narrative of a civilization. We stand on the shoulder of giants. This is about rewriting the narrative of all humanity, of all civilization. The artifacts, the artifacts within held the potential to unlock an era shrouded in secrecy, revealing a more nuanced and complex picture of ancient Egypt. The work of deciphering the tablets, understanding the artifacts, and placing them within their historical context would take years, perhaps even decades. But one thing was certain. The sands of Egypt had yielded a treasure trove of knowledge, and the world was eagerly, eagerly waiting to hear the stories it had to tell. This discovery serves as a stark reminder that our understanding of the past is constantly evolving. Each new find, each unearthed secret, chips away at the edifice of our assumptions, revealing a world far more complex and fascinating than we could have ever imagined. This is about the future. It is constantly about, remember, we're going back to where we began an octave higher. So we unveil, we unearth things that will revolutionize our understanding, that will evolve us far beyond because it reveals a world that's been unknown to us. It's been 
hidden, veiled. The 60-ton sarcophagus stands as a testament to the enduring power of the past, whispering stories waiting to be heard. And as we listen, we not only gain a deeper understanding of ancient civilizations, but also a renewed appreciation for the ingenuity and resilience of the human spirit. We are far more than what we recognize or realize. And this Virgo new moon, this harvest, this coming back to where we began, but an octave higher, will require a leap of faith. It will require us to release the past or what we've known of the past, to make space, make room. It's the mandrakes in the in the Harry Potter series where they are being uprooted from a small pot and being placed into a greater pot. This is true of ourselves. The more we release our own past, and the masks, the identities, the labels, the stories, the scripts, the truths that we've told ourselves, to make space for what's new, what is before us. And when more than one, when two or more are gathered, there in the midst, Master Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit, there am I. It's present. Love. The message of Master Jesus is and was love. Love thy neighbor as thyself and thy God above all other. This is love lift us up where we belong. Because number four from the unseen this week, I heard oper- in big shouting capital letters, opportunity knocks. And then I heard two things after that. So opportunity knocks. And they said, answer the call with an exclamation point. And then simultaneously with it, behind that, with that was, will you answer the call? Question mark. So opportunity knocks. Opportunity is knocking. It's going to knock. It is present. It's harvest time. We're reaping. We're setting the new, you know, the new season. We're culminating, and now we're setting the stage for the next season, the new season. It's number four. It's foundational. And they're saying, opportunity knocks. Will you answer the call? And or more directly from the unseen, answer the call. Answer it. Rise to the occasion. Take the leap of faith. Do what you know to do. And soul-wise, it's your intuition, your soul, your gut, your soul source connection. It always knows what's right, what's highest and best for you. It will always be pointed true north. And so at this moment, and you see me smiling, this moment of time, it's an opportunity to take leaps of faith, to advance, to move, to evolve and move forward. Um, Let me go to our second quote. Because in essence, it answers the question, it's faith over fear. And it says, do the thing you fear. And the death of fear is certain. It's by Emerson. So remember, faith is energy. Fear is energy. There, everything is energy. So simply harness the energy of fear, face it, do the thing you fear, and the death of fear, and it's the death because it's the transmutation of it. Energy can never be killed. It can only be transmuted. So we're transmuting, we're harnessing the energy of fear, and we're transmuting it, death, so that we arrive in a new state of being. Um, and why? It's our, our, it's our mantra from last week. Why? Because we carry the mantle of freedom forward. We are here at this moment to usher in this new era to embrace it, to with, invite it in with open arms, and to see what's on the other side of the rainbow. And like the spirit, this beautiful fabric, the desert sands, and this brings me to Shazam too. This was one of um, Shazam, a whole new world, the desert sands. We're finding that sarcophagus, that 60-ton colossal sarcophagus in the desert sands of Egypt. Well, here's the, you know, the genie's lamp. It's Shazam, a whole new world, and how we know 
that as our key word, this unveiling, it is a masterful unveiling of time um, and of each of us. You know, they're saying to, uh, they're giving me the visual. The, un, the unseen is giving me the visual of we've been in these. Uh, so, you know, when a, an actor is playing a character and they're in a bodysuit, like a full bodysuit, and you unzip the bodysuit, and the real you, the authentic you, steps out, and the costume, the illusion, just falls to the floor. It crumples, it falls. That's this harvest. That's the leap of faith it takes to unzip the costume, the mask. Because we're, everyone's putting one out there for everyone. Well, what's wrong with just being who you are? Authentic you. Soul you. S-O-U-L. And S-O-L-E. <laughs> but soul you. What's wrong with her or him or they or them or what's wrong? Nothing. It's an illusion. We tell ourselves that something's wrong. And so we try to be something else as opposed to being standing in the, at that just utter empowerment and light of who you are. Soul, you. He, she, they radiate. It's powerful. And it brings me to number five from the unseen. It's the, it's the song by Rascal, Fa- Rascal Flats. God blessed the broken road. And the, it's beautiful, the lyrics and everything, the song, you know, it's about the fact that these, God blessed the broken road. These, you know, byways and highways and detours and these masks and identities and labels and so forth were blessed. They're a shadow aspect. They're a part of us, not to harm us, to help us, to demonstrate, in a, in a cloak of opposites, to demonstrate our light, which is why we harness God blessed the broken road, because in essence, it says in the lyrics of the song, because every road led me back to you. So that road can lead you back to you as in you yourself, your soul self, your God self. It can be in a relationship, but it's also really speaking to overall, it's leading us back home. It's the way home. And that God blessed the broken road because it was going to, it serves a purpose. Everything's purposeful. I want to go to astrology by Lauren. And she is speaking to this, um, There are three things occurring, but she's speaking about the Virgo new moon. So Pluto returns to Capricorn. So Pluto again for this, it's going to be between now, uh, September 1st, and I believe the 19th of November before it officially, so it's going to finish up business in Capricorn. We've been talking about this, and then Pluto officially moves um, into Aquarius for the next, uh, until 2043. Then she's also speaking about Uranus stationed retrograde. So on the same day that occurred, um, it was on the first um, and the power of that. But what I want to focus on with astrology by Lauren is the new moon in Virgo. And she has a quote by Donna Markova. You cannot have innovation unless you are willing and able to move through the unknown and go from curiosity to wonder. So see, we dream curiosity. We dream awe and wonder. And this quote by Donna Markova, you cannot have innovation unless you are willing and able to move through the unknown and go from curiosity to wonder. It's not about staying in the past. It is about embracing the awe and wonder of the future. So astrology astrology by Lauren. Virgo is a Mercury sign. It's ruled by Mercury. Gemini and and Virgo are ruled by Mercury. And this year, Mercury is just returning from its retrograde phase and beginning to pick up uh, normal speed once again. And as it does, so it will make a square aspect to stationing Uranus on September 6th and 7th. This is the third time, so this is important. So Mercury is moving forward, it's gaining speed, and as it does, it will make a square aspect, a square is friction, it causes something to 
it, it releases pent up energies. Um, it will make a square aspect to stationing Uranus. Uranus is stationing retrograde. It's going to do its five month retrograde on September 6th, 7th. This is the third time that Mercury will make this transit to the agent of change. Uranus is the agent of change. Uranus by nature can be surprising and unexpected. And every time Mercury makes these squares, it can find us spinning like a top trying to trying to adjust our plans. So Mercury is our mind, how we think, speak, communicate. And Uranus, higher mind, God mind, higher mind, and expect the unexpected. The first degree between I'm sorry, the first square between Mercury and Uranus occurred at the full moon on July 21st. This full moon was in the last degree of Capricorn, which is the same degree that Pluto will be returning to on September 1st. So Pluto is at that same degree now. As a reminder, this was the full moon under which President Biden withdrew his candidacy for a second term and endorsed Vice President Harris to step in. Mercury Uranus is indeed surprising and unexpected because that event was completely unexpected and literally a passing of the torch, that peaceful transfer of power from the, matri- from the patriarchal to the matriarchal, from the, the previous era to the future era. The second square occurred at the super full moon on August 19th which was the first day of the Democratic National Convention in which Vice President Harris's candidacy was formally established. This was when the candidates were unveiling their platform with an emphasis on freedom and not going back, two principles associated both with Uranus and the sign Aquarius. Mercury Uranus breaks with the past and looks to the future. Things feel new and daring and different. It's this difficult at the beginning, persevere. Because it can be, it's things feel it's new and daring and so forth, but it can be difficult, it can be challenging because we're breaking away from 2,000 plus years. The third square follows the Mercury ruled Virgo new moon and occurs on September 6th, 7th, 6th in the US and so forth, 7th in Europe. In this way, it also invests the new moon with these elements of change and sudden shifts as we look to the future. New moons always bring potential to start anew, and the new moon at 11 degrees Virgo, four four arc minutes on Sunday, September 2nd, is certainly no different. In our own mundane lives, Virgo new moons are really good for trying something new in the workspace, such as starting a new project, learning new skills, simplifying and organizing your life and routines. It is a great time to begin a new health and wellness program, tweak a diet, or begin a new fitness program. And this particular moon has also has an affinity for new technology or gadgetry that will help, and that's Mercury, that will help to make your life simpler and get your work done in a more efficient manner. So, and she just concludes with, new moons are great for seeding intentions or making positive affirmations that you might want to see grow over the months ahead. So this is about our dreams, our wishes, what we're looking for, leaps of faith, illumination, where more more than one are gathered. We come together because opportunity knocks. And the unseen is saying when opportunity knocks, it's not when, it's like opportunity knocks. It's going to knock and keep knocking. (laughs) Answer the call. Don't find yourself in the place of, will you answer the call? And if you do move through it, it's for, it's foundational. They're saying, the unseen is saying very clearly, opportunity knocks, answer the call. Leap of faith, a giant leap of faith. Love lift us up where we belong. So anywhere you see the opportunity to be lifted higher, to be moved forward, take it. Do face the fear, the trepidation, the anxiety. Harness that energy and see what's on the other side of the rainbow, on the other side of where you've already been. Because again, where you are, you've already been, been there, done that. What's on the other side? That's what's most, um, because like 
the 60-ton colossal sarcophagus that wasn't about one individual. It was about an entire era, an entire area, era, community, way of life that's being unveiled, revealed for the first time. And they said it's an unveiling like the Sabian symbol, the unveiling of the mysteries of something that was protected. Unveiling the mysteries of the past, the mysteries of the future, the mysteries of the unknown, the mysteries of the unseen. With this statement of like, it's an end, it's a statement, not a question. What lies ahead? It's a statement. So they're unveiling the unseen. This moment is unveiling the mysteries of the past, the future, the unknown, the unseen. Because it's about what lies ahead. And it's a statement, not a question. So we look to these things. um, And this was a beautiful, I just want to bring this image up. It had to do with number three, more than one. You see, it's a mirror image, as above, so below. It's a mirroring and, uh, and uniting, unite, coming together. So it's a panorama of the hot air balloons. It's two now instead of one, it's two two or more, went more than one. There's 16 birds. There's eight and eight. And what was off on the horizon is now center stage, that illuminating light just radiating up off the water from the horizon and everything. So it's amplifying, magnifying, doubling down on when two or more are gathered. There in the mists, I am, to paraphrase Matthew 18, 19, 20. So we, we are blessed in this moment, supremely blessed in this moment. <laughs> and everything about the journey of the, the Sabian symbols associated with this Virgo new moon at this time. And remember, these energies are arcing out. So no matter when you come to this message, Some of us are here gathered right now live. Others will come to this message, you know, days and weeks and months or years down the road. Wherever you are on the path, when you find these messages, it's right on time for you. It's divine time. And, but the interesting thing that the Sabian symbols tell, they tell the story of an unveiling of interior formulation, meaning for us to figure it out. It's an inside job. It's always from the inside out. That is telling a story about hope and the ever renascent, um, so ever, ever rebirthing nature of hope. It's speaking about executive power, higher power. They are speaking about participation in a in collective peak experiences. This is where the yin overpowers yang. It's a time of conformity to what constitutes the highest ideals of one's culture, and that we do so together, collectively. It is participation in collective peak experiences. It is about um, arctopolization, meaning the ideal becomes the new reality. It's the highest ideal of us as humans, of humanity. So it's our godlike nature rising to the top. It's about our impulse to be, but impulse to be not from a a Mars state, you know, a creative force impulse to be. Because many of these these symbols, which I'll post on the Facebook thread afterwards, have to do with women. So there, this one particularly, woman just risen from the sea. A seal is embracing her. This impulse to be. It's our impulse to be who we are when we were born. Our soul. Not our ego, mind, personality self, but our soul self. Sue is saying resilience. Yes, exactly. Resilient. Um, The symbols continue. There's protective forms and a sensitivity to spiritual energies. So we're going to have a sensitivity to spiritual en- uh, spiritual energies and protective forms. We have inner fulfillment. It's joy. 
It's happiness and joy. We're radiating it. And we have new beginnings. And this has been one playing out. It was playing out during the, um, it was playing out during the um, Democratic National Convention and so forth. A woman passed her change of life, experiences a new love. And this whole piece about new beginnings and the maturity that goes along, ideally the new beginning should imply a more mature response to the new possibility of experience and thereby maturity, new beginnings, and finding value in our lives well beyond where we ever thought they could. And there's two left. One is about assimilation versus waste. And assimilation meaning uniting, coming together, unifying all of our parts, assimilating into the new versus waste, because the negative side of that symbol is waste. And um, virtuosity, so really being stellar examples, stellar humans, not mediocre humans, not bargain basement humans, but virtuosity, stellar humans, and deconditioning, so splitting apart, deconditioning, and last but not least, this is the ideal of the world server, we the people, soul, source, connection, leading the way. And so we become world servers. The release of higher energies becomes effective and valuable to the extent to which it serves a higher but concrete and definite purpose. This moment in time, these revelations, this illumination, this Virgo new moon, this moment is about the Aquarian matriarchal era, this higher octave where we, the people, become world servers, or said in, in, in another way, where we serve the world. That sarcophagus wasn't about one person. It was about many. It was about the whole, W-H-O-L-E, the whole. This is an era where we take a giant leap forward, where we, opportunity knocks and we answer the call. And in doing so, we serve the world. And in return, the world serves us. That's where we are. That is this moment in time. And God blessed the broken road because it always led us back home. The way, love lift us up, the way, home. So, so looking forward. These energies are so beautiful. So looking forward to continuing this journey. This new music, new intro music, new opportunities, leaps of faith, illumination, more than one. It's the Three of Cups, more of one, gathering together, collaborating, celebrating, unity, moving forward. And we will see how all of these energies continue to arc out and play. We are a weekish plus away um, because there are two final, um, um, yes, what are they called? Ah, a little bit of Mercury hiccup here for me. I'm, I'm ruled by Mercury. So, um, yes, the eclipses. Thank you, dear James, the eclipses. <laughs> so we are coming into eclipse season. One is going to be coming up mid-September, the other one early October. Um, they will complete the eclipses for 2024. So again, an eclipse, uh, eclipses, they move us forward. So here we go. All right, you all, thank you so much. Love you all. Be well on the journey, be safe, um, stay centered, and allow, dream a beautiful dream. Allow love to lift you up where you belong. We'll see you next week.